Hey, Tenno, this is Miko, and it's literally after Christmas. I finally built my Garuda and been testing it, so I thought I'd share a build and whatnot. Haven't done this in a while. So we're going to remove invincibility. Just as an example. So first we're going to start with what is Garuda. Garuda is the blood elemental frame. By blood, you could go vampire or, you know, like blood mage. Um, her powers are pretty simple. Her first power lunges across with her wings that turn into blades, and she strikes enemies, creating this shield. This shield does debuffs in the direction you're aiming. So if these idiots could ever hit me, we could theoretically show you. Apparently they're more interested in hitting my death cube. Okay, the other thing you can do is charge the damage fling it and deal damage. Now I'm out of energy. So one of her unique powers is her third, which lets you cut yourself. Yes, it's, it's, you know, emphasize she cuts herself. Uh, and gives herself health removed, gives her energy, which goes with her little counter you see up there that's going 9, 10, whatever percentage, just going down to 4 or 1. That derives basically from how much damage she's taken to being how much damage buff she gets. Now, Blood Altar here is her second power. When you cast it on enemy, you jump across the map and basically impale them. You can deactivate it. Also, if an enemy is lower than I think it is 35%, check after this, her one will instantly kill them. Now, her four is kind of interesting. You can move around and do this. You can even do this in midair, kind of for a few seconds. Shit, but it creates these bleed procs. Now, the benefit of this is anything marked does guaranteed bleed. Yay, guaranteed bleed. Now, you see that number, right? I can just hold it and throw, or you can hold it and drain your energy to charge and buff it up. While that's also going down, if you go to zero, you can actually cut yourself, recharge your energy, and then throw it with some excess energy. So that's Garuda in a nutshell. Pretty simple. Blood frame. So the Dread Mirror, Insta Kill, Damage Caps Multiplier, 3.1. Damage 50%. That's flat, you can't alter it. I mean, it's pretty, you know, self explanatory. So let's go with the build I've got so far of this Garuda. This is no form of build. Just making that known. Steel charge, prime continuity stretch, clarity finesse. That's mainly because I hate quick thinking and I like that this gives some critical chance combo multiplier, which is nice. Um, but even with that, just having streamline is more than enough with her umbrella tensile, vitality, just enough to get her into a nice positive range. And we can see this is a very positive range. Health is 850, energy 600 pool, it's very nice. Um, if I had to form this, I'd probably put a few, a dash of E, and then probably throw in something like range and damage. So probably one of these, like Augur, Augur Secrets or Augur Reach here, probably there. So throw that dash there, and then probably for the XMS Power Drift, just because knockdown re resistance is really nice. Okay, now it has some nice synergy with the Hema because she cuts herself, she loses health. So what I do is I use the Hema, deal some nice amount of damage. This is the Riven I have for the Hema. Pretty basic build of the Hema. It's a three disposition. Hema, if you get headshots, you heal yourself. So it's just a way I don't have to cast her two because her two I find is very annoying to allies. I still use the Acapulto because why not Bayonetta use handguns, but because they're a puncture weapon mainly, as you can see with the high puncture ratio, having her four to turn them into slash just makes them very fun, nasty weapons. I actually use this, but Garuda also has a special little trick. If you remove the melee here, you now get her talents. Now, I've told a few people this, but Vermilion Storm is probably the best for this. Damage on block is 80%, good crit chance, but it's got a decent status. I actually use that other weapon because of the Zaw effect, which is from its arcane. One more. There we go. 
Now these Zaws, number one, the Plague Star Zaws, all have base viral. So I put corrosive, and it's got corrosive cold. Cold is the bypass armor. Corrosive is burn away armor, so the two together are nice. Cold also is flat against all types, just like heat, so keep that in mind. But this is more of the epidemic. Eh, been lazy about this. I do have enough of these to make it. I'm just too lazy to throw it together. But mainly it's when you do the slam attack here, it creates this wave. Now, per Grutus 4, it'll actually add bleed procs to it. So everything that's hit within that wave does damage to it. Which is nice, and then it holds them in the air, so then I can cast her 4 or her 1. It's just synergistic. So you don't need to do it, but you can. Now let's buff this up to a bunch of enemies and kind of make this more serious. So I'm going in here without any health or energy buffing. So mainly what I would do is if you're not using the Hema, you create a blood altar. Keep going within this range. I hit them with the Hema to cut their HP in half, so I'm going to do some more damage. Cut myself, get some energy. Start stacking up the damage. blow them up. What I find interesting is the 2 has a much faster ratio of getting across the map than the 1. As I said, Emma is very synergistic with her. Buff this up a bit, huh? <laughs> Took me a while to get it to work like it did on my PC version. Yes, I do have a PC account, for those who care. And Garuda on PC before I did on Xbox, but I have better stuff on Xbox, so it's just still for me to be normal. You can actually keep scaling this, but as I as you see, I can't move it. You could always just re-buff your energy that way. So I mean, Garuda is very powerful, very strong. She also has this bloody effect. The downside I would say of Garuda is she's not very team synergistic. And what do I mean? It's kind of the same issue that, um... I'm just gonna pause AI here. Same issue Limbo and, and even Loki to some extent have. Basically... If I'm not the one doing the damage, because to really start her powers to get going, you need to one, right? If allies are killing these faster than you can get to them, that's not helpful. If I'm doing this, try to give them health, that stays here and the mission won't go to the next thing, like on a defense. So you have to aim at it and recast on it, then that drops them. But, you know, doing that, a lot of new groups just don't know that, and it annoys people. So that's why I said I can kind of understand why people are getting a little annoyed with some Garudas. What do I mean about the slash effect? Very nice. Now, I want you to also notice, since I paused their AI, that means that this is also dealing um, stealth multiplier. And a lot of people don't believe that, but it is. So, like, if I turn on, it's not going to deal this much damage. So this is more stealthy, but I was just more trying to focus that you can in fact get, you know, lead procs with this rather easily. So that's all this means. So if you see a mark, shoot it, and you help the Garuda out because you're, dealing, you're gonna deal bleed procs also. It's not just isolate the Garuda. Well, that should be able to kill him in one shot. Yep. So yep. Lethal works fine. I mean, you can move around. It's kind of like Mesa. You're very locked in place. But I don't like it is because I can't like do a 360 mark a bunch of enemies. I'd rather this be more like how Ash works, where I could, you know, 
dictate who I'm marking. But sadly, that is not the case. So, thanks for watching, and I hope this, you know, helped your build. I'm going to show the colors at the end because some people do say they like my color combinations. So all I did was a light gray, light to medium grays, an orange, a tan to get this kind of nice gold effect, and then another darker orange for the energy. So, thanks for watching. Talk to you later.